Hi, I'm Simon with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we're going to show you how to repair your appliance. Are you ready? Remember, anytime you work on your appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we'll show you how to replace the spider arm assembly in the Samsung washer. It's going to be a very easy repair. should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. For this job, we're going to need a Phillips and a flat blade screwdriver, a torque tonic screwdriver, a plastic mallet, a ratchet with an extension and three heads, 19, 13, and 10 millimeters, some penetrating oil, a wire brush, and a heat gun. When you open up the package, you're going to get a new spider arm assembly. The spider arm assembly is mounted at the back of the inner basket. It supports the basket and transfers the rotation from the rotor. A broken spider arm could cause excessive vibration, noise, and even smoke from a burning door boot seal, and in some cases, no spinning. If the spider arm is not replaced right away, the problem will expand and more parts will have to be replaced. To get the top off, we need to unscrew the steel screws. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver and just take them out. To take the top off, slide it back about an inch, and then we can lift it off. And I start with uh, removing this clamp from the holes. Just squeeze it and slide it up. It's not hard. Then we're going to remove the holes. Let's remove the dispenser drawer out. Press the tab and pull it out. Remove this hose from the dispenser housing. To take out the housing, we need to remove the two Phillips screws here, and then we can pull it out. Slide it out. And I'm gonna flip it over and put it out of the way. To remove completely the control panel, we need to take a couple of more Phillips screws. Lift up on the control panel. Turn it towards yourself and uh, disengage the bottom, bottom clips. We need to disconnect all the plugs to free the control panel. So we're going to start with the top. This is a relay. Press in the tab and lift it off. Now I'm going to free the wire from the clips here. Second one is right there. Then the third one. Support the control panel. And there's nothing else is holding it. No more. And the last plug. And now we can remove the control panel. Now we can open the door and then remove the boot spring clamp. We're gonna peel it up a little bit, then we're gonna use a flat blade screwdriver to pry it out. There's a spring at the bottom. And here's the clamp. Remove the boot seal from the lip. And tack it in. These two Phillips screws are holding the uh, door lock, so I'll remove that screws to free the door lock from the front panel. And close the door, tuck the harness out of the way, and then we're going to remove the four Phillips screws that holds the front panel at the top.
To open the door, we push down that little tab, and it just gets open. So now we're going to need to take this off the hinges, pressing the hinge in, pressing the hinge in, door comes off. Remove the pump drain holes from the retainer. And now we're going to take out the two Phillips screws that holds the front panel to the chassis. At this point, uh, the front panel is held in place by these two tabs at the top and three hinges at the bottom. So we're going to open the door, lift up on the front panel to release the two tabs. Then we're going to close the door, tilt the panel towards you, and lift it off the bottom hinges. Let's remove this uh, clamp. We're going to squeeze it, move it up, and then pull the hose off. And, uh, take it away. We're going to remove both counterweights. Start with the top one. That would be a 13 millimeter socket range. Take out two bolts, kind of hold that weight with your second hand. Remove the second bolt. And then we're going to pull this counterweight off the tub. It's not extremely heavy, but it probably, I should say, about 10 pounds, so be careful. And the bottom one, again, two bolts, 13 millimeter, remove it carefully. <coughs> okay. Put it aside. We need to tilt the washer back. So I'm going to install the support here, and uh, we're going to put it on it. I'm going to take this Phillips screw out in order to free the air chamber from the tub. I'm doing it because uh, when we're going to drop down the tub, this pr pressure chamber could be broken. We don't need that. So I'm going to release it from the clamp here, the air hose. I'm going to reach from the bottom here and uh, squeeze this hose clamp, slide it down. And then we're going to pull the air chamber from the holes. So we're going to free the air holes from the clips. And just let it hang down. Now we're going to use this uh, 10 millimeter socket wrench and we're going to loose up that clamp and Pull off the top to pump holes. We're going to squeeze this clamp, slide it down, and pull this hose off the top. Just let it down. At this point, I'm going to place the washer upright. And put everything on the top, out of the way. We need to remove this rear access panel. It's held in place by two Phillips screws. So we're going to start putting on the gloves first. You know what, guys? I am not working all the time in the gloves, but I just want to point out that if you see me putting the gloves on, that means we're going to work with the sharp objects like this panel. And remove the field screws. So now I can lift the rear access panel up and take it out. We're going to use the heat gun to break close the bolt. It'll take a few minutes. Next, we're going to stick this uh, torque 10 screwdriver into this hole. 
Remember, it's supposed to be only this one. Do not use any other ones. We're going to jam the rotor. And then using 19 millimeter socket wrench. Unscrew the bolt, hold the screwdriver all the time. Okay. And then grab it on the sides and remove this rotor from the shaft, rocking it side to side slowly because it's held in place not only by that grooves and shaft also by the magnets inside and wear the gloves don't pinch your fingertips examine the the magnets see if they're not chipped so there's nothing is damaged here Next, I'm going to free all these uh, wire plugs and wires from the top. I'm going to start with uh, opening this retainer clip, pulling out the wire plug. This is our temperature sensor, the thermistor. Push down on the tab, disconnect the plug. We're going to remove uh, two Phillips screws that holds the wire harness and this bracket. So release the bracket and now we can take these plugs out. I'm going to use the flat blade screwdriver I'm going to press down the locking tab here and pull out the plug. Then squeeze those two side tabs and pull out the plug. Put it away. The next step would be taking off the stator. Uh, six bolts, 10 millimeter size. We're going to use the uh, socket wrench. Kind of uh, hold that uh, stator in place. I'm using my knee. I will let you decide what body particles you're going to use. And now I can remove the stator. So next step would be uh, disconnecting the rear shocks from the top. We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket wrench and remove the bolts that hold the shocks to the top, one at a time. And then pull the shock off the mounting post here. And push it aside out of the way. Do the same thing on the opposite shock absorber. We're going to remove that bolt. And now for the front shock absorbers. We're going to disconnect the upper portion of the shock absorbers on both sides to free it from the tub. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket wrench with an extension to, to remove the top bolts. Disconnect the shock absorber from the top post and push it aside out of the way. Now we're going to disconnect the second shock absorber from the top and use a 10 millimeter socket wrench. Unscrew that bolt. Push down on the top and slide the shock from the socket here from the top and then put it aside out of the way. Squeeze that clamp, slide it up, and then we're gonna disconnect the air hose from the top. That would be our last hose connected to the outer top. Let's remove the dispenser housing out of the way and put it outside. And uh, check uh, there's there's no stress on any of the hoses. 
The next step would be removal of the top brace and the front bracket. We're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws that hold the top brace. Lift the front of the brace and pull out the two tabs at the back. So now I'm going to remove the front bracket. It's uh, held in place by uh, six screws, three Phillips screws on each side. Yeah. Start removing the screws. Lift the bracket off. As you notice, I'm wearing gloves again because the metal is sharp. And we pull the harness through the cutout. And I'm uh, going to put it on the side out of the way. Using the flat bed screwdriver, we're going to push down the locking tab and open that safety lock on the spring holder. Pull up on the spring to disengage it from the spring holder. Slowly put it down. Turn the spring down and uh, disengage the bottom hook from the top. Removing the other side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the flat bed screwdriver, push down on the locking tab. Open that uh, safety. Lift uh, the top by this handle with one hand. Turn it and lift it. And then using the second hand, remove the spring from the spring holder. Put it down slowly. And then we can uh, turn the spring and uh, take that bottom hook out of the tub. Next, we're going to lift uh, the tub out of the cabinet. Obviously, I'm using a strongman mat. Thank you. So let's uh, lift this and slowly pull it out. And I'm going to turn it vertical and land it on a couple of supports. Next step would be uh, uh, separating the top and the bottom halves of the outer tub. We see here several uh, 10 millimeters bolts. So we're going to have this 10 millimeter socket wrench and uh, have a bit of a patience. And I'm going to take those screws out. Now we're going to lift up on the top half and separate them and then remove it. So we're going to rock side to side the basket. Hopefully it's going to break loose and we're going to lift it up. <coughs> yeah, we got lucky. If you're not so lucky and yours is not going to move out like that easily, you'll have to turn over the lower portion of the outer tub and then pound this shaft with a hammer, but you have to put something between the hammer and the shaft like a piece of wood. So we're going to remove the tub of the supports for now and I'm going to bring in and put here our basket. So this is this part of our arm assembly. It's held in place with the six bolts, two on each arm. And we're going to remove them using the 10 millimeter socket wrench. But before using the force and uh, breaking the bolts, we're going to use a heat gun to hit each bolt. And then we're going to remove them. Okay, you're going to use the heat gun to uh, hit those two bolts and break them loose. It'll probably take a few minutes. Start moving, reverse and uh, put it back in, and then reverse again and let's take it out, slowly, don't rush. I believe each bolt is like six to eight dollars, so 
you definitely should order some, I should say probably three new bolts, just in case if you break the old ones. Continue heating up the bolts uh, using a heat gun to break them loose. And using the 10 millimeter socket wrench, I'm gonna break it loose. Don't break it literally, just start it slowly. Then return it, tighten it for a little bit. Just, just a bit. And then we can go unscrewing it again. Oh no! One bolt decided to break off. So that's why I told you you need to order some bolts uh, with this spider arm assembly. So let's continue. Spray some penetrating solution and try to hit it again. And the last pair of bolts, same procedure. I'm gonna heat it for probably like a close to five minutes. Then I'm gonna spray some penetrating solution and heat it again. Well, it's five out of six. We can call it a good score. I'm gonna use a plastic mallet to break loose the spider arm connections to the drum. We need to use a flat blade screwdriver and uh, pry it out. All right, that's an uh, old and ugly spider arm assembly. This is the old spider arm assembly next to the new one. If you don't have this part, you can get it from appliancepartspros.com. We're going to use a, a wire brush to clean that contact area where the spider arm assembly is mounted to the basket. All right, now I can install the new spider arm assembly. Place it so the holes would match. And push it down. Check if it's all installed so all the six holes are matching. And now we can put bolts in. Well, because one bolt decided to die prematurely, we're gonna have to replace it with a new one. Uh, this is the part number, DC60-40137, A is an apple. You can get it from appliancepartspros.com if you don't have it. Uh, that's uh, how the new bolt will look like. And now we're gonna install this new bolt you can choose any hole you like out of six and tighten it with a 10 millimeter socket wrench. All right, just leave it out for a little bit. We're going to install another bolt into the uh, different arm of the spider. And again, tighten it but not all the way. And another single bolt goes into the third arm. Don't forget to tighten that one because it was loose. And the last bolt goes in. Tighten this one. All right, 
Before installing the basket into the tub, we need to check condition of two seals. First of all, that center tub seal. Look around at the edges. If, if it sits in tight, there's no damage, no corrosion. That's what it is right now. And then the second, the, the tub seal, which goes around the tub. Uh, if it needs to be cleaned, wash it with a sponge and a warm water, a little soap, and uh, make sure it's not damaged. In our case, everything is perfect. We can proceed with installation. Now we're going to lift up the, the basket and insert it into the opening. There's one little point here. See that little uh, gasket o-ring around? Make sure it's on before you install it. Turn it, make sure it's installed properly into the bearings. Okay. Now we're going to put the top halves together, match the holes and shapes. And push it down. So we're now going to start securing the two halves of the top with bolts. I'm going to install four bolts first across each other. So one goes in here. Second one goes here. The third one goes in here. And the fourth one we're going to put on this side here. We're going to tighten those bolts using the 10 millimeter socket wrench. Don't uh, tie them yet. Just uh, make sure it stays in. Then we're going to the bolt on the opposite side from the one we just tightened in. And tight that thing also. Then we're going to tighten this one. And uh, number four on the opposite side. The rest of the bolts can be installed in random order. Now it's the time to call your friend to help you to put this thing into the cabin. Put it down slowly. Remember, there's a drain pump still installed. To install the first spring, we're going to put that uh, short end hook through this hole in the tub. Prepare yourself for lifting it. And we're going to grab that handle, lift up the tub, and hang the spring on. If it's heavy for you, you probably should call the second person. Then we can close that safety. We're going to install that the bottom hook into the uh, opening here in the tub socket. Then we're going to grab it with both hands, lift it up, and install the spring into the spring holder. If it's heavy for you, you can uh, ask for help second person or you can use a, a rope as a tool to pull up the spring with your both hands and then we can close that uh, safety lock on the spring holder push it in and now we can put that uh, bracket back on I'm gonna start with feeding the harness through the opening here And I'm going to place these two tabs supposed to go into the two cutouts in the cabinet. That's two on each side. So I'm going to place one side at a time. Then I'm going to go on the opposite side here and here. And then I'm going to secure it with the screws. I don't need gloves anymore so I can take them off. We're going to secure it with the six Phillips screws. 
three on each side. Now we can install the top brace. I'm going to place these two tabs into cutouts and lower down so that uh, one tab on the front is going into the cutout. And then we're going to attach this with the two Phillips screws to the front bracket. We're going to start installing the front shock absorbers from that left side. And that's just my personal preference. Slide it on the on the post and secure it with a 10 millimeter bolt. Start it manually and then I'm gonna continue installation with a 10 millimeter socket wrench. And now I'm gonna install the second shock absorber. I'm gonna match the holes and put it on on the post and secure it with a 10 millimeter bolt. Start it manually and then continue with the 10 millimeter socket wrench. Connect the rear shock absorber one at a time. We're gonna pull it a little bit up and install it on the mounting post. Now we can secure it with a 10 millimeter bolt here. And I use the uh, 10 millimeter socket wrench and tighten the bolt. Install the second rear shock absorber the same way you installed the first one. And secure it with the 10 millimeter bolt. Now we can install the stator back on that this uh, RPS sensor goes approximately 5 o'clock so we're gonna move it in the position and we're gonna put this post in the holes here three posts and I'm gonna hold it and we're gonna secure it with uh, one bolt Started manually. Then we're gonna put the other one uh, diagonal from the first one. And then we can use our 10 millimeter socket wrench to tighten them. Not too much, just enough so it will stay in place. And then we're going to put all the bolts in. And tighten them up with a 10 millimeter socket wrench. Uh, we're going to use that uh, cross technique as uh, everything goes. Uh, if you have uh, more than a couple of screws or bolts, it should be attached tight in a, in a cross shape opposite bolts and now we can tighten them all again don't get it too excited Let's connect the plugs. We're going to start with this one on the top. Press, push it in. We're going to lock then the second one. Push it in and it locks in. Then we're going to attach the bracket and the green ground wire. There's a couple of Phillips screws. I'm gonna put the, the ground wire first. Insert that uh, little tab into the cutout. All right, so match the holes at the bottom. 
and secure it with the Phillips screw and connect this uh, thermistor plug and put it into the uh, retainer and uh, now we can place the rotor back on the shaft we're going to match this shaft teeth with the uh, slots in here and go side to side all right don't worry if there's like could be like a little bit uh, uh, shaft is still in the bolt will pull it and start the bolt manually and then we're going to use a 19 millimeter socket wrench to tighten the bolt now we need this torque 10 screwdriver and we're going to put it in to jam it hold it Push it down and tighten the bolt. <sighs> okay. Next, we can install the rear access panel. First, we're gonna align those two tabs on the top with two slots. Then push it up, and the bottom tabs goes in. And then we can push it down. Two Phillips screws on the sides. We're going to secure the access panel to the cabinet. And I'm going to place the support again behind the washer. And we're going to tilt the washer back. Careful, don't hurt yourself, don't break anything. Connect the holes to the tub. There's uh, two little, uh, you see those two little rubber pins makes a, a channel that goes right over the little tap here on the top. And then we're going to squeeze the clamp. It's easy to squeeze and secure the hose. It's the time now to connect the top to pump hose back to the top. So I'm going to slide it on all the way up and then using the 10 millimeter socket wrench we're gonna tighten the clamp should be nice and tight you don't want it to come off during the spin cycle pull on it hard see if it stays on all right we're going to install the air hose into the clips here on the side of the tub. And then we can connect it. We can put the air chamber tube into the hose. We're going to match this little uh, tab here with this cutout that goes in all the way. Nice and tight. And Squeeze the clamp, slide it up, and secure the hose. And now we're going to install the air chamber and uh, secure it with the Phillips screw to the top and put the air hose into the clamp. Now I can put the washer upright. And remove the support. We're going to install the bottom counterweight. Put these two holes on those two pins on the side. Hold it. And install that uh, bolt. 
turn it manually first. Then we're going to use the uh, 13 millimeter socket wrench and tighten. And then we're going to install the top counterweight. These two holes on the sides goes over the two pins here. We use the opening for the bolts in. Hold it, don't let go, and start the bolts manually. And tighten it with the 13 millimeter socket ring. And let's put the hose back on. Slide it all the way in. And then we're going to squeeze this clamp and secure the hose. Yeah, the front panel goes back on. We're going to insert the drain hose into the opening and lift up on the panel, place it on the hinges at the bottom, push it forward so it will lock on the top tabs. And I secure the panel with the two Phillips screws at the bottom. Place the pump drain hose into the retainer. Make sure it's not going anywhere. And this is the time for the door to go back on. Install one hinge at a time. Push it in. And then just close the door. Secure the front panel to the bracket with the four Phillips screws. Open the door, reach inside and uh, fish out the uh, door lock assembly and uh, put it in. And then we're going to secure it with the two Phillips screws. Let's install the boot seal. I'm going to pull it out. We have to install this slip over that front panel slip. Don't rush, take your time. Make a visual check that it's installed properly. Now we're going to install the boot spring clamp. We use the spring at uh, approximately 6 o'clock. Put it in, then we hold it. Jam the flat blade screwdriver, approximately 2 o'clock here. And then stretch the spring and place the spring clamp in with the flat blade screwdriver. Make sure it's in the groove all around the seal. Then pull the seal. Pull hard. You don't want to have a, your laundry room flooded. All right, you can close the door now. Bring in and install the control panel. We're gonna start with connecting all the wire plugs. We cannot possibly mix them around because they're all different. And continue plugging it in. Put it under the here under under the retainer. And the last one. Turn it over. Make sure that there's uh, no hanging connectors. Uh, around, everything is attached. Then we're going to match the uh, pins with the cutouts. Turn it forward. 
press in the bottom. And then we're going to secure it with the Phillips screws. And now we can install uh, the dispenser back. We're going to put this tab into the cutout and this tab into the upper cutout. And now we can put two Phillips screws in. Let's put the holes back into the dispenser housing. Push it into the clips here. And the dispenser drawer goes back in. We're going to place those two edges into the cutouts. And push it in. Let's connect these holes to the top. Push it on. Make sure it slides on all the way. See, it's perfect then. Then the clamp goes on. Squeeze it. Well, you know what, I'm going to use both hands. But you pretty much understand what I'm doing. Push it down. Now we can put the top back on. Install it approximately an inch away from the front panel. Then we're going to slide it forward and it locks in. Let's secure the top to the cabinet with uh, two Phillips screws. Plug the washer in and make sure it runs good. Thank you for being a part of another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. For any of your future appliance repair projects, please check out our other videos available on our site, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram.